Campaigning actually stopped on Thursday. That allowed on Friday and Saturday for security officials, security forces to cast their votes early along with uh, select other professions. The main vote would, of course, be taking place on Sunday. And there's a couple of main issues that they're going to be uh, voting on the back of, one of which is the relationship with the central government in Baghdad and with neighboring countries. That's become a major issue because of the independence referendum that was held last year here. There was an overwhelming vote for independence, and yet, at the same time, that was not accepted by the central government or by, uh, by uh, the KRG's neighbors. And that led to a real downturn in the relationship between all of those different parties and in turn that led to economic issues now of course between 2003 and 2014 the really were the boom years here in the KRG however as we've seen in Erbil and Soleimani are the two main cities in this region that's not the case anymore Farooq Hassan is finding it hard to sell homes the former Peshmerga fighter turned real estate agent has plenty of properties on his books but not enough interest. Before Daesh, we were making money. Property was very expensive, but after Daesh came out, prices became half of what it used to be. My brother bought a house for $450,000. He had to sell it for $190,000. You see the difference? When developers started these vast building projects, times were good in Erbil. They were exactly the kind of developments that were giving the city the reputation as the Dubai of Iraq. But as the economy stagnated, so have the projects. The money has run out. The fight against Daesh and disputes with the Iraqi central government have led to a reduction in the funds coming into the Kurdish regional government, or the KRG. On top of that, the KRG lost control of the oil-rich city of Kirkuk to Iraq's central government after last year's independence referendum. Many government workers have started getting paychecks after going months without being paid their full wages. And the general economy has been sluggish, forcing many, including real estate developers, to cut their losses. Shaswar Abdul Wahid has been successful in the real estate industry. His upmarket German village project in the city of Suleymaniyah is selling well. Business may be good, but he now wants to invest in politics as the head of the newly founded opposition, New Generation Party. The New Generation, as you know, we had the background of the business. We had a plan, and this is the first political party that we have a plan for the next 15 years. The plan is talking about the good governance, about the economy, about the education, the health. To do that, though, the party faces the uphill task of defeating the established Iraqi Kurdish parties, the KDP and the PUK. The opposition say they're corrupt. We think that the two main parties, and especially the KRG, Kurdistan region government, they, they don't know anything about the economy. They just sell the oils and put some money in their pockets and give the rest as a salary. They don't have a strategy project. They don't have any idea about the economic and about the future of Kurdistan. Parliamentary elections were supposed to take place last year, but were postponed in the uncertainty that followed the independence vote. The parties have now decided the vote will take place on Sunday. Few expect the KDP and the PUK will lose their majority, but they would like someone to kick-start the economy once again. Abu Bakr al-Shamahi, TRT World, Erbil, Iraq.